Hey, Math 30-1. Okay, so we're getting into new unit, um, permutations, combinations, and binomials. It's going to be a pretty fast one. Um, so what this one is about is really the number of ways things can happen. That's what we're going to be doing first. Um, and then binomials are kind of like their own little, uh, their own little twist. But permutations and combinations are pretty much figuring like, you know, the, the number of ways that you could choose two students from a group of 50 or something like that. Right. Um, yeah. So first off, to get our bearings here, we use something called the fundamental counting counting principle, and and all this really is right is if let's say that you had um, you know four you had four different colors of shirts, and you had or four different shirts, and you had three different pairs of pants. So how many different outfits could you actually make? Well, the fundamental fundamental counting principle just says that that would ju you just multiply the number of ways. So if you had four shirts, that would just be four times my three pants. So there's twelve different outfits you could wear, right? So so that's pretty much it. We just multiply the numbers when we uh, when we're kind of figuring out how many ways that could happen. Um, yeah. So let's jump into this example. It's, it's kind of the same thing, but just another twist on it. So. It says, many video games over the years have incorporated some version of a three-part key sequence to unlock some portion of the game. For example, if there are three chains that have to be pulled in a certain order to unlock the door, how many different combinations are there? Um, okay, actually, technically, that would be how many different permutations are there, but we, we quite often say combinations. We'll get into what combinations really are in the next uh, or two unit, the lessons from now, but all right, so... Here's the idea. So you got like, let's say, chain number one, chain number two, and chain number one, two, and three. And we have to pull those in a certain order to unlock the door, right? Okay, so fundamental counting principle. We just do it this way and say, okay, how many ways are there for my first pull? Well, I could either pull one, two, or three. So we'd say there's three different ways that that could happen. So I like making these blanks. You'll see me doing that quite often, where this is like the my first option. And then after that, the way this works is, after I've pulled that first chain, how many chains do I have left to pull? Well, I only have two left. And then after I've pulled the first chain and the third chain, how many options do I have left? Well, I only have one one option left. And then the fundamental counting principle says we just multiply the number of ways. So there would be six different ways that we could pull the chain, right? Um, okay, so six ways. Now it says prove your result with a tree diagram. So a tree diagram kind of just spells it out. So an example of that, let's say, let's say if I did pull, let's say chain number one, right? Then after that, I have two options. I could pull chain number two, or I could pull chain number three. And let's say we did if we pulled chain number one, and then we pulled chain number two. Well, then after that, I have to pull chain number three, right? So that's like one path, right? Through is that one where that that could have been the situation that happened. Or if I pulled chain number one, and then chain number three. Well, the next one would be to pull chain number two, and there's another path. And then we're just really going to write out all the different paths that we have here. So then the next one would be, well, we could have pulled chain number two. And then if I did that, I could, I'd have, well, I could pull one or three. And then if I pulled one, I would have to pull three. If I pulled three, then I'd have to pull one, right? So there's two more paths. There's two more situations that could have been the case. And then the last one was, if I pulled three, then I would have to pull either one or two. And then this would be two and one. And there you go. And you can see that I literally have three, or sorry, six different different uh, situations that could have happened. So there'd be six ways. Okay. And, that, and that's called a tree diagram because it looks like a tree. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Next one here. So it says license plates um, in a certain country consist of six characters. Uh, the first four can be any continent, and the last two have to be different numbers. Uh, how many license plates can be made under this system? Okay, so again, what I like to do is make my blanks. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six blanks. 
Now it just kind of tells us which things are allowed in the first and in, in our certain blanks here. Okay, so now, yeah, we'll just kind of do what they ask here. So it says the first four can be any constant, right? So this just requires that we know how many, I guess, constants are in the alphabet. Um, yeah, there are 21. You could count them out. Uh, but anyway, so there's going to be 21 could be in the first spot. And then 21 in the second, right? There's 21 in that option. And then 21 and 21, right? So that many options for my first one. And then we move down to the last two. So it says the last two have to be numbers. So how many, so this is the one I always trips people up to. So how many different numbers are there? Well, there, if we've got the numbers zero to nine, well, that's actually 10 numbers, right? From zero to nine, because you count zero. So there'd be 10 for that one and 10 for that one. And then, yeah, we're all kind of, we're kind of set up there, right? So they just, we multiply when we write them all out like that. So in the end we get, what do we get? Large number, 17 million, 503,290. All right, next one. So it says, the paper on which you wrote your new friend's phone number was torn and the last two digits were lost. Uh, you remember that the digits were not the same. How many 10 digit phone numbers might you have to try to guarantee you find the right one? All right, so 10 digit phone numbers. So you could write our, our digits here, right? So we'd have one, two, three, four, five. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna put them in groups of three, like phone number. All right, so, all right, so if we're trying to figure out the number of digits, well, you know, technically they told us it was just the last two that we didn't really know, right? So in this case, the first number, we did know, right? So we can actually say, well, that one's, there's one. It has to be like whatever number it is, right? So there's one way that that can happen. One, 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 right? We like, we know all these. We know that, those ones, we know that, those ones, and those that, we know those ones. So really one times one times, you know, the other, the other, that's all just one, right? The only thing that was really of interest here was these last two. So right off the bat, I could have just ignored that and said, well, how many ways do I have to rearrange these last two numbers, right? So that's not too bad. So then if we're doing that, then all we have to do is say, well, okay, well, for this first number, well, there's 10 possibilities for that. And then it says, though, that they were different numbers, right? So how many possibilities are there for the second one? Well, now there's only nine because we chose 10 for the first one. Right? So then in the end, there's 90 possibilities. All right, next one. In how many ways can a teacher seat four girls and three boys in a row of seven seats if a boy must be seated at uh, each end of a row? Okay, let's get our bearings here. Let's write out um, our lines again. So we'll do uh, seven seats, right? So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And now they told us that in the first spot and the last spot, right, the at the end of each row, there must be a boy, right? Well, how many boys do we have to choose from? There's three boys. Okay, well, let's say it, we just look at that first spot for a second. How many how many ways are there to put a boy there? Well, there's three to choose from, right? And then I'll I'll do the end now too, like while we're at it. If I've chosen one of the boys, now how many are there to choose for the last one? Well, now there's two. And, and now that I've done that, right, now I can just say, okay, well, the rest of the people, right, everything else in the middle here, it doesn't really matter, right? I don't care who's a boy and who's a girl. There's five people left, right? There was four girls and one boy left. But either way, I mean, there's five possibilities for that one, and then four, and then three, and then two, and then one. Okay? And that's it. So once you get all those, then... You know the deal, you just multiply them all together. So we end up with 720. So 720 different possibilities. Okay, now next one, it says there's no restrictions. So for this one, all we're gonna do, we'll just write other blanks again. Okay. 
And then, okay, no restrictions. Then that just means I don't care who's boys. I don't care who's girls. We have seven people, right? So in the end here, it's just, well, there's seven for the first spot. And then there'd be six for the next. And then five, four, three, two, and one. Okay, and that's it. So that one's even easier, right? So that one's 5,040 possibilities for that one. All righty. Now, complete the following. Cam is determining how many odd five-digit numbers there are. And this one can be a little bit deceiving, right? Because it might not tell you this last part. It's up to you to know this. Is that how many odd or how many five-digit numbers there are in the first place, right? Is that the first number is not allowed to start with zero, right? Because like this situation, you you wouldn't call that a five-digit number, right? That'd be a four-digit number. So the very first spot, like when we make our blanks here, we're going to have five spaces here. But the very front spot, um, we're, we have a restriction on this, right? How many ways can the first, can the first one go in? Well, typically there'd be 10, right? Because you'd have zero to nine. But this one can't be zero, so there's only... There's only nine ways that that can happen, right? So you can write this and be like, you can say that it can't equal zero to remind yourself of what I'm doing there. Okay. And then the next spot, well, the next spot you could have any number. So 10 and then 10 and then 10. But then just be careful in the last one, right? So just remember we're talking about odd five-digit numbers. So odd numbers would end in... Well, an odd number, right? So the possibilities for here have to be 1, 3, 5, 7, or 9, right? So it, it could be one of those, but that's it. Okay, so then this has to be 5. So that's the end in one of those. Okay, so now we can just multiply all together. And we get 45,000. So these can be tricky, so just, just take your time on these. So, yeah, speaking of tricky, this one I think this one could be definitely a little tricky. So it says, now Cam is determining how many even five-digit numbers there are. And we're adding this one now that there's no repeating digits allowed, okay? So in this case, just to get our bearings here, let's, uh, let's write down our blanks. And let's try to figure out, like, what we're dealing with here. So again can't be equal to zero, right? We know that, that it can't be equal to zero for that first spot, just, just for the same reasons it was, it was last time. Now, let's think about this last spot, though. So in this last spot, even numbers, right? They would end in, in uh, well, zero, two, three, oh, no, what am I doing? Zero, two, four, six, or eight, right? So you might be tempted to say, okay, well, there's, there's five of those, right? So I can just say five. Now, here's the issue. So, yeah, let's let's think if we put in um, zero into this spot, right? Well, here's where the issue comes up. If if that was a zero in that last part for my for my number there, then we run into an issue because we're not allowed to have repeating digits. So if the if the last one there is zero, then the front one actually can't be zero either, right? Because you can't have zero and zero. They can't be repeating. Okay. So, yeah. Speaking of, uh, yeah, little tricky questions here. This one could be a little tricky in particular. So, let's, uh, well, let's read it first. Now Cam is determining uh, how many even five-digit numbers there are. And this time, there's no repeating digits allowed, right? Last time we were. We were allowed to just repeat like, you know, there was 10 for that one, 10 for that one, right? But this one's going to change. So let's write down our blanks to kind of see what we're dealing with here. So, two, three, four, five. All right. So now, just like the last one, we're going to say, okay, can't be zero for the first one, right? Um, let's look at the last, the last part here, right? So... If it's an even number, then this thing would end in 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8, right? So you might be tempted just to say, okay, well, same as last time. Let's just make this 9, right? Because it can't be 0 and you know, maybe like 9, 8, 7, yada, yada. And then the last one would be 5. 
But the only issue is here, right? Is that when I, since we're dealing with the, the, the not repeating part of it, whatever I choose, right? Whatever I choose for this, right? Let's say that I chose a two to go in there. Well, what happens now is that the number out front can't be a two. If I chose a four for the last one, then the number out front can't be a four. You kind of see what's happening here is that instead of this being nine like it was last time, it's actually only going to be eight because it can't be the number that we have on the end. But that being said, let's let's take a closer look at the zero too, right? Let's for a second just assume that I put a zero in there. Well, if I put a zero in there, now how many possibilities are there for that one? Well, there's actually nine, right? Because re remember, it never could be zero. Right? It was never allowed to be zero, so there was nine in that case, right? So we run into an issue here where we have to split this thing up. We have to come up with different like number of ways. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up one situation where um, the last number is not zero. Here, so let's write that out. Last number is not zero. Okay, so that's this scenario. So let's do that first before we keep going. So this one, if it's not zero, then I only have four options there. So in this case, the first one here would be, well, eight, like we said, right? Because it can't be zero and then it can't be the number in the end. So there'd be eight possibilities for the first number. Okay. Now that we've chosen that number, you might think that we're just going to say, okay, there's seven possibilities now. But that's actually not quite right, because this, this one now can be zero, right? That, this one's allowed to be zero, so that, like, adds one more, right? So there's actually eight possibilities now for that second spot. And then after I've, I've chosen both of those two, now there's only seven, and then there's only six, right? So that's kind of like that pattern that we saw above, right? Like in this example, with the restrictions, like seven, six, five, four, like, and you just count down like that. But that front part can be a little confusing. And then the last number here, well, there's just four possibilities, right? There's two, four, six, or eight, okay? So if we add that all, or multiply all that together, then there is 10,752 um, possibilities, right? But then don't forget, we also have the other situation, right? The other situation was when the last number, last number, um, is zero. Okay, so let, we have to do it all again now. So we'll make our blanks. So again, we can say, well, the front number there is not allowed to equal zero. Never is. Okay. And then how many options do we have for the last spot? Well, it has to be zero, right? That was the whole point. The last number is zero. So there is, well, one option for that, right? It's equal to zero. It, it, hopefully that makes sense. Okay. So then, okay, well, then there's only nine possibilities. And I don't have to worry about, you know, this one already being chose because it's zero, right? The front number was never allowed to equal zero. Okay, so there's nine possibilities, everything but zero. And then after that, well, then there's eight. And then seven. And then six possibilities. So if we multiply those together, we end up getting 3,024. Okay, so now, in this situation, we, we split it up, right? There was this many ways, and then also this many ways, okay? So in this situation, we're not going to multiply them. We add these together. These are like different cases. This is like case number one, and this is like case number two. So we just add those different situations up. So we'd say, okay, there is 10,752 plus... 3,024, so we end up with 13,776. All right, like I said, that one's going to be a little tricky. And then this one's going to seem really simple now in, in, uh, in hindsight. Okay, so now this one says, how many odd or even uh, five-digit numbers are there? And repeating is allowed. Okay, well, yeah, this one's pretty straightforward because now just we just have to remember that the front number cannot equal zero. So there's only nine ways for that to happen. But then after that, if repeats are allowed, 
then this number could be anything, right? This could be all the numbers from 0 to 9. So there's 10 of those, 10 of those for the next one, 10 of those, 10 of those. Okay, so there is 90,000 different ways. Okay, moving on. How many different four-letter arrangements can you uh, rearrange from the word question? Okay, so now any letter can be in any position. All right, so again, how many different four-letter words? So I'm going to draw four blanks. And then I'm going to look at the very first letter. How many options are there, right? There's no restrictions. It says any letter can be in any position. So really, I'm just wondering how many different letters there are, right? There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight to choose from. Okay, so in that first spot, I could have eight to choose from. There's eight different ones. Okay, and now this is the situation, though, like where um, order does matter, right? Where I can't, there's not going to be eight for the second one because I can only choose from these letters, right? I can't, I can't have two Q's in a row or two S's in a row, right? Because I have to choose the different letters. So now there's only seven after I've chosen the first one, and then six, and then five. Okay, so that, if you multiply those together, we end up getting 1,680. All right, the first and the last letters must be consonants. All right, so again, let's make our four letters. Now it says the first and the last one must be Consonants. Well, I got to figure out how many of those I have. So I only have, well, Q, S, T, and N, right? Those are my only consonants. Okay, so there's four to choose from. So let's look at that first spot. I could put any of those four in the first spot. And it says the last letter must also be one. So if I go to the last letter and say, okay, well, I've already chosen one. So I've only got three now to choose from. And then after that, I'm, I'm kind of good to go, right? I've got the rest of them, but just remember, we've already chosen two of these, these constants. So how many do I have left, right? So there's six, there's six different uh, choose from after I've chosen those. So there's six. And then after I've chosen that one, then there's only five possibilities for the next one. All right, the first letter must be a T. So let's do the same thing with the four blanks. So my first letter must be a T. Well, how many ways are there for the first letter to be a T? Well, one, it has to be a T, okay? So then after that, I just know I've already used the T. So then I can just use the rest of the letters, right? So there's only seven left now. So now I'm just gonna go seven, and then the next one would be six, and then five. All right, now, again, this one can be a little bit tricky too, right? It says the word must contain N. Like it has to have N in it. So let's do our blanks again. So we'd have one, two, three, four. Now, here's the issue is that I could say, okay, well, let's put an N in the first spot, right? And how many ways can that happen? Well, there's one. And then you'd have seven, six, and five, kind of similar to the first one, right? But what if the N was in the second spot? So again, this is where we're gonna have like our cases, right? where this will be like case number one, and then I'm gonna add it to case number two, where we can have N in the second spot. So we'll have our blanks again, but this time N's gonna go here. So there's one way for that to happen. And then you'd have seven, six, five. And then in the second spot, you'd have, well, the same thing, right? You're probably seeing where I'm going here. Put our blanks, and has to be in the third spot. So then there'd be seven, six, five. There was one way for that to happen. And then it could be at the end. So, set, oh, ends at the end, one way, and then seven, six, and five. Okay, so if you do all that, you would have got, well, this would have been 210, this would have been 210, and yeah, all 210, right? Okay, so you end up getting 840. Well, you probably saw a pattern there too, right? This is fine. You could write it all out with the different cases, right? Like this is one case, two cases, three cases, four cases. Um, but the other thing you could have done, right? If it asked a simplified or something like that, 
is you could have said that this was the same thing as 210 times 4. Right there, I'll write it there. This would all be the same thing as 210 times 4, or like 7 times 6 times 5 times 4, right? That would actually get you the same number just because there's four of them, right? They're all the same. All right. All right, so one thing to note here is that anytime you have to distinguish components of a question with uh, the word and, that represents a multiplication between the digits. So something and something else, right? That'd be like our fundamental counting principle. If you were going to wear, uh, if you had four different shirts to choose from and three different pairs of pants, you would multiply those to figure out the number of outfits, right? But if it was, um, if, if you see the word or, then that's going to be addition, right? If it's this thing or that thing, right? So it's like the end could have been in this spot or this spot or this spot or this spot. And then we add, we add those situations together. Okay. And then anytime there is a restriction, did you guys notice that? Yeah, that's what I was kind of doing like in this example, right? Where I said, okay, I put, I put the, uh, the consonants there and there first and then filled in what was left. So I did the restrictions first. All right, next part. So factorial notation. So whenever the numbers descend from the largest number all the way down to one, we actually have a, um, a notation for this in, in math. It's called factorial notation. Okay, so we had a couple of examples above where we had this situation where it was like six times five times four times three times two times one. In math, we write that as six factorial with like an explanation point. Okay. It's different places on your calculator. You'll find it under, one sec. So on a TI-84, uh, you're going to find it under math and then probability. And actually, same thing on the TI-Inspire. But on the TI-Inspire, you'll also find it down in the bottom right. You'll see you have like a bunch of like symbols, like, you know, question mark, factorial and stuff. So you should find that there. And then you can write it in if you type in six factorial it would actually do the same thing as writing out six times five times four times three times two times one. Okay. So now in general, this is, uh, this is how we can write out factorial notation with any number, right? So this is just like a variable N. So this actually is saying the same thing as above, but just like, a, like I said, like in a general um, expression. So in this case, right, if N factorial, there was like five factorial above, well, that would be, okay, so that would be n or 5. Okay, so, yeah, um, n would be like our 5, right? That's where we're starting. And then the next one was 4. And do you see how 4 is just 5 minus 1? Well, that's where this comes from, right? n minus 1. And then 3 is really the same thing as 5 minus 2. So that's that one. And then we just keep on going down. And then the way this is written, it goes dot, dot, dot. It just means that there's going to be some stuff in the middle. But either way, we're going to end at 1, right? So either way, we're going to end at going, like, down to, like, you know, down to 3, 2, and then to 1. Okay? Um, yeah, so let's do some examples here. So we can actually do some, yeah, some math with factorials, too, right? If we kind of write these things out. So, like, in this case, if we had 7 factorial over 3 factorial, that would be the same thing as 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 2 times 1, right? That's what 7 factorial is. And then if I divide that by 3 factorial, that's really 3 times 2 times 1. You see how that's the same thing as just canceling out all those? So this would all be equal to 7 times 6 times 5 times 4. Okay, so in the end, yeah, you could also just actually write the answer out. So those would be the same thing as 840, doing it that way. But actually, one one thing here, too, I just want to kind of show you. I could have written this a little different. I should have done that from the beginning. This would have been the same thing as 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times. And I could have stopped at 3 factorial. Do you guys kind of see that? That 3 factorial would be 3 times 2 times 1. So then on the bottom, we could have just had 3 factorial. And then it would have been fine just to cancel them like this, too. Right, so you might see it written that way as well. All right, so let's uh, let's do one with the with a variable in it. Okay, so in this one, 
we're going to follow the same pattern, right? So it'll be, we'll start with n plus 2. And then just always ask yourself, what's 1 less than n plus 2 or whatever you're dealing with? Well, that would be n plus 1, right? That'd be 1 less. And then the next one would be n. And then you'd keep keep going, right? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, my, my keeping going would really just be calling this n factorial. But really, it, the next one would be n minus 1, n minus 2, dot, 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 3 times 2 times 1, right? It would keep going forever. But I can get by, I can just call this n factorial because that means the same thing. Okay, so I'm going to leave it at n factorial over n factorial, and then I can cancel those. So in the end, this is all the same thing as just n plus 2 uh, times n plus 1. And then... You could expand that out too, and that could be written as n squared plus 3n plus 2. All right, next one. So we've got n minus 1 over n or factorial over n plus 2 factorial. So, um, you know, I'm actually going to expand the bottom to kind of show you how this is going to look here. Because on the bottom here, this would be n plus 2. And then n plus 1. And then n, well, just n, yeah. And then the next one would be n minus 1. And again, I'm just going to call that factorial, right? Because that just keeps on going forever. And the top is already n minus 1 factorial. So now I'm good to go, right? Do you see why I did the bottom first, though? Because I really wanted to make it the same as the top, right? If I did the top and expanded that all out, well, that wasn't going to get me any closer to n plus 2. It was actually going to get me farther away, right? So, okay, so now we can cancel. We get rid of the factorials, and we end up with, well, there's still 1 on top, and then on the bottom, we've got n plus 2 times n plus 1 times n. And, yeah, that's fine. I don't need to expand that. I'll just leave it like that. All right, next one. So the next one here, we can say... The top here would just be, all right, I'm going to rewrite this as n times, and then the next one would be n minus 1. Okay, that's looking good already. I'm just going to call that n minus 1 factorial, because it goes on like that forever. Over, and then the bottom's already the same, n minus, or times n minus 1 factorial. So everything cancels, it looks like, and we end up with just 1. Okay, so we can also uh, solve um, factorials as well. So in this case, uh, well, let's, well, when we're solving these, what we got to do really is get rid of the factorials. I don't really know how to like deal with factorials, like when we're solving. So we want to get rid of them, doing the same method we did above, right? So very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite the top of this. So this would be n times n minus 1 times, and then this looks good, n minus 2, I'll call that factorial, over n minus 2 factorial is equal to 42. And then these nicely cancel, right? n minus 2, n minus 2. So we end up with n times n minus 1 is equal to 42. And then you guys should be well aware how to solve for these now, right? So we, we expand those, so we get n squared minus n is equal to 42, so we get n squared minus n minus 42 is equal to 0. And then factoring this, we get n minus 7, n plus 6 is equal to 0. So n is equal to um, 7 from this one, and n is equal to negative 6 from this one. But now, one of these is extraneous. You're probably guessing the right one. Negative six doesn't make any sense for my n value, right? So when we're when, when we're doing these, they're actually going to be our natural numbers, right? So greater than one, because I can't really start off with like negative six factorial, right? Like negative six factorial like that, because if I start counting down from that, the next one would be negative seven, and then the next one would be negative eight, and then negative nine. Do you see how I'm getting farther and farther away from one? So that doesn't actually work. I have to be dealing with numbers that are like, well, natural numbers. Okay? So those negative numbers just won't work. All right. So now, if you combine 
the things we did at the beginning there with the spaces, right? When we were making like our spaces and counting down. Like there were a couple of cases where we had like seven, six, five, right? S situation like that. If we combine those with our factorial notation, we're we're into something called permutations, which it really just is again just a number of ways. It's just kind of like another way of writing it. So let's say, let's say if we just go down a little bit, right? In this example, it says if there are seven members on the student council, then how many ways can the council select three students to be the chair, the secretary, and the treasurer of the council? So using the fundamental counting prin principle, right? If we were just to make our blanks, well, we could say if there's seven members, then, well, the first spot, there could be seven, and then six, and then five, right? So that's really what this is. There's seven times six times five possible ways to fill those positions. We're just going to do the same thing using permutation, like a permutation um, form here. So, yeah, um, if you, if we rewrite this, right, as... Do you see? Do you see the pattern here that this would have been like six times five times, or six, seven times six times five times four times three times two times one, right? Like written out like this. But then we had to get rid of the four times three times two times one. Well, the where the way we can get rid of that is by dividing by four factorial, right? Do you see that those would all cancel with all of those? That's really what is what a permutation is, right? That same thing is or it can be written in a different way. It can be written in permutation form right and the formula for permutations is this it's going to be npr okay where r uh, represents the items taken from the set right so that's going to be in this case would be three and n is where you start a good way to remember this like in our situation right where you've got let's say seven different uh members is I would think about it this way and say, okay, it's of the seven members, we're going to pick three, right? So seven P three. Um, yeah, but the way this works now is if you put this in your formula, NPR, right? Which is N factorial, right? So that'd be like seven factorial over seven minus three factorial, like in our example. Well, that would be the same thing as seven divided by four factorial which was just canceling out those, right? That's all it was doing. It was just canceling out what we what we needed to there, which would be yeah, 210. All right, so example, we can put this into your calculator. Okay, so yeah, if you get, grab your calculator, you can go into math and then over to probability, probability there. And then you'll see we've got NPR and NCR. Right, well, we're going to be using NCR soon. Um, so NPR, enter. Now, this one with TI-84+, plus, it actually just lets you put it in exactly like it's written there. So it'd be 8, and then P, and then 5. Right, and then enter. Okay. So that would be the, so 6,720, right? So we'd say, yeah, 8, P, 5. 6,000, what did I say? 720. Right? And just remember what this is saying. I wrote that kind of weird. This would be the same thing as saying, okay, if you had five spots, this would be like going 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4. That would also be equal to 6,720. Right? They're doing the same thing. Okay? Okay, so now just kind of playing around with some factorials here. Um, let's show that 5 factorial minus 3 factorial is actually the same thing as 19 times 3 factorial. All right, so how we're going to do this is I'm going to take the first one here, this 5 factorial, and I'm going to write this as 5 times 4 times 3 factorial. And then it's going to be that minus 3 factorial. So now from that, what we can do is we can say, okay, well, what if I just factored a, or a three factorial to this whole thing? So this would be the same thing as three factorial times five times four minus one, which would be the same thing as three factorial times 19 or 19 times three factorial. Okay. Solve for, okay, so now it's written in this form and it wants us to solve. 
This isn't going to be very useful the way it's currently written. So what I'd rather do is write out our equation, right? So that's going to be um, n. So yeah, we've got np2 is equal to 56. So I'm going to rewrite this guy as n factorial, just using my equation, right, over n minus 2 factorial is equal to 56. So now from that, we can do a little bit with this, right? So I want to have n minus 2, so I'm going to expand the top. So let's write this out. This would be the same thing as n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 factorial over n minus 2 factorial is equal to 56. So now we can see that the n minus 2s cancel. And we are left with n times n minus 1 is equal to 56. Okay, so that's not too bad now. So we can expand that out. So we're going to get n squared minus n is equal to 56. So n squared minus n minus 56 is equal to 0. So we get n minus 8 and n minus 7 equal to zero. So our answer, oh, sorry, plus seven, I mean, my bad. So in the end here, this is going to be, okay, well, n is equal to eight and negative seven. But we know that's not true, right? It can't be negative seven. So our only real, our only real answer here is going to be n is equal to eight. All right, moving on. Okay, so it says, Use permutations to determine how many arrangements there are of uh, two letters from the word Sylvan. Okay, so this is the same thing we were doing before, right? With like the spaces. Um, so we could say, okay, before it would have been two spaces, right? There was six to choose from. So it would have been six times five. So I'm expecting my answer is 30. This would be the exact same thing as saying of the six letters, we're going to pick five of them. So that's also 30. Okay, I'm just going to jump down to the last one here too. So five letters from the word formula. All right, so this is just going to be the same thing as 7P5. 7 pick 5. So that's 2,520. Okay, so this one says, Vehicle license plates consist of three different letters followed by four different digits. If the letters I, O, Y, and Z are not used, determine the number of different license plates. Uh, they can make. Okay, so if I was going to write that out using the fundamental counting principle, that would be two, three, two, three, four, right? So three different letters to begin with, right? So if we take away these letters, right, because we're not allowed to use them, then we've got, well, so 26 minus our four here, so there's only 22 left, right? 26 in the alphabet, minus 4. We've got our 22. And then they can't repeat, right? Oh, you know what? It didn't say it can't repeat, did it? We're going to assume that they can't repeat. Okay, so it'd be 22, 21, and 20, all right, for those first spots. So those are our letters, right? That's a letter, that's a letter, that's a letter. And then our numbers are going to be the next ones, right? So then it's going to be, well, no restrictions on the numbers. So there'd be 10 for the first one, and then 9, and then 8, and then 7, right? So those are our numbers. Okay, and that says, oh, sorry, let's write the numbers. The number for that, or the answer there, was... Um, large. Okay. So now it says use permutations to find the answer. Okay, so we can use permutations from above by just kind of focusing on the first part and the second part. So for the letters there, that'd be the same thing as saying of the 22 letters to choose from, we're going to pick three of them, right? That is what this is saying right there. 
And then we just multiply that by, of the 10 um, numbers that we can pick from, we're going to pick four of them. And if you did that, we would end up with the exact same answer. All right, last question. All right, so solve this algebraically. Okay, so if we've got, um, well, here, you know what? Let's actually just kind of simplify this first part to begin with. So if we've got n minus 1, um, p2, okay, then here my equation was npr is equal to n factorial over n minus r factorial, right? So we're going to stick to the same rules here, right? But on the top now, it's going to be n minus 1 factorial, right? Because that's what this spot is, right? So we'll say n minus 1 factorial over, and then it was n minus r. So in this case, though, it's going to be, I'm going to use two brackets. It'll be n minus n minus 1 minus 2 factorial. Okay, so hopefully that made sense. And then this was all equal to 90. We'll just keep in mind, right? All right, so simplifying this down, this was n minus 1 factorial. And then I'm going to rewrite the bottom, right? I'm just going to combine those. Because n minus 1 and then minus 2, if I just ignore the factorial and just do inside the brackets there, that would be the same thing as n minus uh, 2. Oh, sorry, n minus 3 factorial. Okay, and then from here, that's equal to 90. I'm just going to expand the top out. So we'll write this now as n minus 1. And then again, what's what's one less than n minus 1? People, this, this trips people up. One less than n minus 1 is n minus 2, right? So don't go the other way. So it's n minus 2 and then n minus 3 factorial. So we can cancel that on the bottom. And then you can see what happens here, right? So that's equal to 90. And those cancel. All right, and I think you guys are probably good from here, but I'll keep going anyway. So we've got n minus 1 times n minus 2 is equal to 90. And we'll expand that out so we get n squared minus 3n minus plus 2, I mean, sorry, is equal to 90. So then n squared minus 3n minus 88 is equal to 0. And then we'll factor. So we get n minus 11 and n plus 8. <clears throat> so our answer here would be, well, really just this one in the end, right? It's going to be n is equal to 11. This one would be n is equal to negative 8, but we know that that's not really going to be an answer for us. So then, yeah, so there's our answer. Okay, this uh, lesson's getting pretty long, so I'll let you guys kind of go through the, the hints and just kind of use that to your advantage there, but I'm going to end that one there.